Welcome to Synthesize This. In this episode, I'm going to attempt to make a flute slash bass sound which has Boards of Canada type vibes, so a nostalgic, warbly kind of retro vibe. And I'm going to be doing it on the Behringer DeepMind 12. Let's get started. All right, so as usual, the first thing we want to do is initialize a basic patch. So we hold program and hit compare. That initializes the patch. I also want to make sure that what you see on the front panel here is actually what the sound will be. So I'm going to revert to panel by holding program and hitting right. So now we have a basic patch. So we're going for after like a flute type of sound and it's going to be a little wobbly and have that Boards of Canada sort of characteristic. So the first thing we want to do is get in the general territory of a flute. So a flute has a very mellow sound so we want to remove the saw oscillator and just have the square wave and that'll give us less harmonics which will give us a softer sound. And I'm also going to set the pulse width to be about 50% duty cycle. I'm also going to bring the octave up one octave because the flute sound is generally higher up here. But we can adjust later as we go because this sound might turn into more flexible and not just be a flute. But we're starting with flute as a principle here. So again, the other way to make the sound softer is to close the filter, the low pass filter here. And I'm also going to increase the keyboard amount. This will infect how much of the keyboard CV will affect the cutoff frequency. So the higher up I play on the keyboard, the brighter the sound will be. This will help some of the higher pitch sounds cut through a little more because they have less beef in them. So we're already in general flute territory here. The other thing that's interesting for flutes and if you want to approximate more realistic flutes, typically when a flute player plays, you would hear that general initial burst of air as they're blowing through the flute. And this is more obvious in pan flutes where you're really kind of blowing into the air. And to simulate that, we can use a bit of noise and so we're going to try to find a way so that we get an initial burst of noise so that we don't have a continuous noise because when you're playing the flute you're not constantly projecting this high attack you're kind of you spit at the beginning and it gets that initial noisy attack and then you get the flute sustain so we're going to use the third envelope here which is called the mod envelope here to modulate the volume of the noise so that it only bursts at the beginning and yeah, so let's achieve that now. I'm going to leave the noise, uh, the noise level all the way down and we're going to rely completely on the envelope to bring it in and out. In order to make this effect more obvious, I'm going to open up my filter just for now. And I'm going to go into my mod matrix. I'm going to select envelope 3 as my source. And as a destination, I'm going to choose the noise level. And one shortcut for that is you can hold mod and then move the noise slider and that'll select noise level here. So the modulation depth is all the way down. I'm going to exaggerate it for now so you can hear the effect. And I can hear that noise. So the key thing now is to go into the mod envelope, which is the third envelope here. And I'm going to shape it, reduce the sustain all the way down and have just a bit of decay and quick attack. So as you can hear, you get that punchy noise attack at the beginning. And then it fades out and all you hear is the note. So now it sounds a little too percussive, so we're just going to tweak it around to get something a little more realistic. So the key parameters you want to tweak are the, the decay time and the attack time of the third envelope, as well as the modulation depth. 
and we're going to massage the filter as well, which I've kind of opened now just so you can hear the effect. So I'm going to go back into my mod matrix and lower the amount of the contribution. And I'm going to start lowering my filter so we can hear the effect. Because as you lower the filter, it obviously also filters out the noise, so it's harder to hear. So you want to get your filter into a place where you would like for the flute and only then adjust the the depth of the noise because you, you might need to exaggerate it. And again, we can play around with that. And if it's a little too aggressive and percussive, you can lower the attack time a little bit. Right, I'm going to leave it at that for now. It sounds pretty good. The other thing I want to do is turn this into a mono patch because obviously a flute is not polyphonic. But of course, you can always play it polyphonically and get interesting effects. But I'm going to leave it mono for now. The other thing I like to do for um, to keep the sound a little more expressive is to assign a little vibrato to the mod wheel or aftertouch. So we're going to do mod wheel for now. So in the oscillator parameters, when I hit edit here, there's a few options. One of which is to assign the source of the pitch mod. And right now it's set to LFO 1, so we're going to leave it at that. And then we can control the modulation depth of that using the wheel, the mod wheel. And we can assign how much that effect has here with this wheel to pitch mod amount here. So I'm going to open up or increase my mod wheel all the way up so we can hear the effect. And I'm going to change this to a sine wave by holding edit and moving the rate knob. And now you can see the sine wave is selected. And the key is to make this subtle. So we can either use this for vibrato type effects. And similarly, we can assign the filter cutoff to also be modulated by a filter. And this one is set to LFO2 by default. Uh, I said modulated by filter. I meant modulated by an LFO. <laughs> um, and similarly, you can also set the mod wheel LFO depth for this parameter. And in this case, it's using LFO2. I'm going to change this to a sine wave as well. And again, I'm just exaggerating the effects so you can hear what's going on, but the key is to make everything subtle. So we're, I like to usually exaggerate the modulation depths, hear what's going on, adjust the settings, and then pull all the way back until you can almost not hear it. And I think the subtlety of it is what makes it interesting, in my opinion. So we have it set up in sort of a vibrato mode right now. But the other cool thing you can do, which is more aligned with the Boards of Canada style sound, is to pull the rates all the way down 
and get some pitch modulation that happens in very little amounts but stretched out over long periods of time so you get these kind of warbly sounds that are going in and out of tune and that simul simulates the characteristics of vintage analog synths which have trouble kind of keeping in tune and here again the key is subtlety because you don't want it to sound like it's going out of tune you just want to give a little bit of character This is exaggerated, so you want to kind of find that sweet spot. So we have a pretty decent kind of baseline for the sound now. So the other thing I'm going to do now is move over to the effects, which will also add a lot of character. So one key effect I like to add is some sort of tape or analog delay. And the closest thing we have in the deep mind is this T-ray or tel-ray delay, which is based on oil cans of all things. And again, subtlety is key, so we want to reduce the mix here and go into the settings and set a delay time. And one cool thing we can do on the DeepMind is actually modulate different effects parameters. So I'm going to go back to my mod matrix and I'm going to assign LFO2. Uh, it's backwards. All right, so I'm going to assign LFO2 as my source and as my destination. If I go all the way to the end, you can see these effects parameters start to appear, which are contextual to the effects you have selected. So in this case, effects one is my delay, and then one of the parameters is the delay time. So I can increase this amount. And here again, subtlety is always key because right now it just sounds like a pitchy mess, which it could be what you're after. This is like extreme, extreme nostalgia. <laughs> um, but we want to kind of tone it down a little bit. And this adds to the pitch warbly effect because as you know, when you change the time of a delay, it actually changes the pitch. And if you do that in a slow amount, which right now my LFO2 is modulating both my cutoff frequency and this delay time for the the analog delay. And I'm going to go back to my effects section and in the second slot I'm going to add the TC reverb and dial it down so it's not too crazy. and tweak the mod envelope, which is my noise attack. And in the mod matrix, I can reduce the amount of noise because it's I find it a little too much.
whoops, I accidentally switched my mod source. Envelope three is what I want. Here we go. And you can lower the attack a little bit on the VCA envelope so that the flute is not so percussive and aggressive because there's different kinds of flute playing. You can blow softly or you can kind of spit into the flute like you would a pan flute. And you start to get into the general territories of the Boards of Canada kind of nostalgic 90s. not the exact sound but you get in the ballpark the general idea is to just have these soft warm sounds and then add just the right amount of warble and pitch shifting and kind of detuneness which adds to that retro nostalgic kind of feel and you don't have to play it as a flute the sound is pretty universal so you can pitch it down and, and then the key thing they do a lot is um, modulating the frequency as you play different passages so it's not static and i believe their bass sounds are heavily based on the sh101 and the deep mind sounds a lot like the juno synth so it's all the same kind of rolandish family turn it into a bass pretty it's a pretty cool universal patch to have you can go from flute leads to nice bass tones And of course you can add the second oscillator. I like to keep these kinds of sounds clean. So I like one single oscillator with filter. I like that pure tone. But you can still add two oscillators. 
kind of beef things up a little bit. And of course, as I mentioned before, you don't have to leave it in mono mode. It's just more natural for flute and bass and lead sounds. But since we have 12 voices here, we might as well see what it sounds like in chords. Anyways, hopefully this was fun. Um, please subscribe and like if you like these kinds of things. I try to post synthesize this videos, which is this series, at least once a week on different synths. I did the Pro 2 before. I'm doing a lot of DeepMind now because it's fairly new, but I plan to add different synths as I go. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.